Hello, I'm Brian and welcome to this video which will be about the ACCA paper P5 March and June 2017 revision guidance. Now for this video you will need a copy of the question and answer set which you'll be able to download from ACCA Global. Now in this video we will be approaching the question using a five-step approach which can apply to any P level paper in the ACCA examinations. This approach, the first step will be to assess the question. That means you're going to read the question and see exactly what the question is looking for. You're going to find relevant data in the question scenario. You'll be evaluating that data for suitability, whether it's useful or not to you. You'll be drawing from your knowledge which you have studied and trying to evaluate that data and think how do you answer the question. And finally, step five, you will answer the requirements of the question. Now, this is very important so that you don't write out of point. So we'll be looking at question one, part I, which is evaluate the links between the current key performance indicators and its mission. So the first step will be assessing the question. So here is the, the question at the top. Uh, which is part I, evaluate the links between the current key performance indicators at DS in Appendix 1 and its mission. Now, um, let's look at the first word which they use, which is evaluate. Now, evaluate usually means to take a deep look. Now, when you see the word evaluate in a question, it doesn't mean that you may need to make a decision or... Um, yeah, or make any judgment. It just means that you are going to take a deep look at what is already in the question prompt. That means it's already there. You're going to take a look at it. The second word which is important in the question is the word links. Now, when you see the word links, it usually means that there is a connection between two different objects or maybe more. So we'll be looking at connections between things. The third key important words or phrase in the question is the word current key performance indicators. So this is a data object which you will be looking for within the scenario. You need to find this in the scenario in order to answer the question. And the last part of the question which is important is a second data object which you will also look for in the scenario which in this case is mission. Now we're going to start the second step of our five-step process, which is finding the relevant data. So in the question prompt, the first data object that we talked about was the current key performance indicators. Now they did say that you can find this in Appendix 1. So when we go to Appendix 1 in the question paper, you should be able to find this set of uh, this table over here. And you will find the key performance indicators on the left column. You will also have some guidance notes relating to those key performance indicators. Now, not everything here is relevant to answering this particular question, so you need to be very careful and see which is relevant. In part two, we are going to look for the mission, and the mission can be found in the second paragraph of the question prompt which is over here, the mission of DS is, quotation mark, to give the shareholders maintainable, profitable growth by developing the best talent to provide world-class services with maximum efficiency. You have further guidance on how to answer the question in paragraph 4, over here. She wants a report by the board to address whether the current set of key performance indicators measures the achievement of the mission. So in this case, you it reminds you again to link the, your answer between the KPIs and the mission. However, over this side, you do not want suggestions of new key perform new indicators. That means you are not required to create any KPIs. You just need to evaluate the existing KPIs. So now we are going to evaluate the available data since we found it. Let's take a look at what the question prompt has for us. So first of all, we are going to break down the mission. The first part of the mission is shareholders. Shareholders are 
an external stakeholder. And since it's inside a mission, that means DS is accountable to this external stakeholder. The second part of the mission is the word maintainable, which in this case means you can keep it going, preferably in the long term. You have the words profitable growth, which means you want the company to grow bigger, but not at the expense of profitability. That means just revenue growth alone might not be important, not, might not be enough. You will also need profit. Here you have an HR issue, which is developing the best talent. So going to the next page, you will find world-class services. So that means you will need some kind of comparison with your competitive environment or any other providers of the same services as DS. And you'll be looking finally at maximum efficiency, which in this case means the efficient use of resources to generate profit and run operations. So I'm going to recap the six main components of the mission statement. You have shareholders, you have world-class services, you have maintainable, you have profitable growth, and you have maximum efficiency, and finally, you have developing best talent. So now, we are going to go forward to the KPIs, which we can find in Appendix 1. There are six of them to consider. The first one is operating profit margin. Now, this is closely related to note 6 in the question notes and you will find that this excludes exceptional items which is the correct treatment for operating profit margin you have a term called secured revenue which is explained in note 3 now secured revenue is long-term recurring revenue that means a percentage of budget revenue which is already contracted which means a revenue that you should highly likely be able to earn within this year. However, there is an interesting point here where the budget is not completed until well into the year, which means that um, any variance that arises from this might may or may not be relevant because it still can be adjusted by management. Finally, uh, you have management retention, which is relevant to note 4. It is the management retention of managers who are still employed. Now, in note 4, uh, management retention is restricted to full-time managers only, if you read note 4 very carefully. You will have the order book, which is the cash value of future contracted revenue. Uh, this means that DS might have multiple contracts which run into the future. Um, it does, the, the note does say that it runs up to 10 years, but we're not really sure what is the exact length of the contracts that it has. You have organic revenue growth, which is basically a historical, probably year-on-year -year calculation on revenue. So in this case, it might be year one compared to year two compared to year three. Or in this case, it could be year uh, 2015 compared to 2016. Something interesting, it does include net acquisitions which are supposedly a one-off item, so they might not they are not supposed to be in organic revenue growth. Finally, you have ROC, return on capital employed, which is a very well-known measure. And uh, the formula which they use to calculate ROC is given to you in note 8. Okay, now we are going into step 4 of our 5-step plan, which is drawing from our studies and the knowledge that we have collected so far. So we're going to take a look at our Appendix 1, at the KPIs again, and we're now going to try and link it to the mission statement. So the first one is operating profit margin. This can be linked, first of all, to the profitable growth component of the mission statement. Usually, when you have a positive operating profit margin, it indicates that you have, well, profit. And in this case, DS has positive operating profit margins, so it is profitable. It is also linked to another component of the mission statement, which is maximum efficiency. The higher the percentage of the profit margin, it means that DS is very efficient at generating profit from operations. 
Taking a look at secured revenue, this is linked to the maintainable portion of the mission statement uh, because it does tell you which cash flows are, or revenue is highly likely to be received within that one year. However, it is only for one year, so it is quite short term. Management retention is linked to the mission statement component developing best talent. It's quite an interesting indicator. It's quite high in this particular question. It means you have a good level of job satisfaction among the managers which are being evaluated. However, some issues occur. It does not indicate the development of talent. So because it just tells you whether you're keeping the employee. It doesn't tell you whether you're building the talent of the employee. And lastly, it does not reflect on part-time contract managers and also operational staff, that means those nearer to the customers or actually pro providing those services. The order book is linked to the maintainable portion of the maintainable portion of the mission statement. It does indicate some consistency. That means when you have a good order book, that means you're in the near future, your revenues should be quite uh, stable. However, it does not indicate the length or the profitability of these contracts. Organic revenue growth is linked to the profitable growth portion of the mission statement. And in this scenario, it's a historical measure of revenue growth and it might indicate future revenue growth and of course this is assuming that everything else is held constant and uh, however the, in the note you will find that they does include some exceptional items now exceptional items occur only once in a while and maybe should not be included in this measure finally you have ROC which is a very well-known measure related to efficiency it basically shows um, how efficient DS is in generating profit from its available capital. It does not, however, indicate volatility in ROC. So that means year on year, it might fluctuate, but this is not indicated by the simple percentage which is given. Okay, so now that we have evaluated all the available data and we have thought about it and we've linked the uh, mission statement to the KPIs, we are now going to write our answer to the question. So first of all, before we start, we'll talk about some quick tips which you can apply to any similar type of question in P5. Um, in this particular situation, the first part of the answer should show the different components of the mission statement because you need to, since you need to identify them. Second is that you should link the performance measure to the mission statement component. Now in this scenario, because the performance measures are, well, they're separate, they're not closely linked to each other, they're separate, so probably you could use a bullet point approach for part two. So I'm going to show you the first part now, which is related to the mission statement. We are going to build an answer skeleton. Now if you are short on time in the exam, or you really don't know what to write, you could write this as a possible answer, however you might lose some styling marks or something like that because the answer is not exactly um, put into proper English or fleshed out. So in this case, the mission statement has these components and I've just listed them down over here. <coughs> Accountable to shareholders, maintainable profitable growth, developing the best talent, providing world-class services and having high efficiency. So you could write this in your answer if you're short on time or if you have a mind block and you're not really sure what else to write. So now we're going to write out the first part of our answer. The mission statement of DS makes it accountable to shareholders with a primary objective of achieving maintainable, profitable growth. Please take note that I have written the word here primary objective because the DS is a profit oriented company. And second, which would be achieved in three activities, developing the best talent, providing world-class services, and being efficient. That means these three things are linked to achieving that primary objective from the mission statement. Now, for the second part of my uh, question, 
I have this uh, skeleton over here. Again, you could write this if you are short on time or you're not sure what else to write. Um, so what I've done here is I've just linked the KPI to the mission statement item flat out. As you can see here, operating profit margin is directly linked, linked to profitability and efficiency. Secured revenue is linked to growth. Management retention is linked to developing talent. Order book is linked to profitable growth. Organic revenue growth, again, is linked to growth. And ROC is linked to efficiency. How many marks will you get for this? Now, the available marks for this question is 8. And the second part here is uh, good for 6 marks. So you probably might get maybe 3 out of 6 for the second part if you write it this way. It's not well fleshed out. Um, the evaluate part of the question hasn't really been um, answered correctly. But you will st still get some marks because you have identified the links over here. Okay. Now, the final point which I want to talk about, which you may or may not write, is that there are no KPIs in the question which is linked to providing world-class services. All of the given KPIs, they're all internally based. That means they only look at the internal operations of DS. None of them look at its performance relative to competitors. So you can't evaluate the providing world-class services component. So now we're going to flesh out the answer for the second part. Um, so the KPIs are linked to the mission as follows. So a positive operating margin is a good indicator of profitability. And it also shows the efficiency of DS in generating profit from operations. Second bullet point, secured revenue indicates maintenance of revenue streams in the short term. It's quite important that you highlight that it is short term, not long term. Here's the second part, another bullet point. The management retention percentage may indicate job satisfaction among full-time managers. However, it does not indicate the development of talent, especially among part-time managers and operational staff. Fourth bullet point, the order book indicates future revenues. However, it does not indicate the length and profitability of these contracts because the contracts are in the order book. And the last part, organic revenue growth is a historical measure of revenue growth. It, however, in this particular scenario, it does include revenue from exceptional items such as acquisitions. ROCE is a well-known indicator of efficiency in generating profit from its capital base. And finally, there is no KPI which links to delivering world-class services. Okay, thank you. I hope this helps you answer uh, question 1i of the P5 March-June 2017 examination. Thank you.